All right, now we're on meter perfect. So today is May 16th. It is long weekend, Saturday. Um, today I'm here to chat with David Salmon, who is gracious to come and hang out with me as we talk about music stuff. How's it going, David? It's going pretty good. Um, having a good Saturday so far. Woke up way too early as usual, but... Way too early, the yeah, coffee, I suppose. The coffee's hot, so... Hey, I mean, I've heard people even during when they were kind of the forced quarantine isolation they were still getting up at five even though they didn't have to so oh yeah i mean it's just you have to it's what what i'm used to right? <laughs> exactly if i can keep something of a routine in my uh in my in my normal day that's that's a good thing <laughs> yeah yeah totally so um for those of you who haven't seen one of these streams yet because this is like the third one i've done um we hang out with the person get to know them um and if you are watching live um, you can chat. You can get into chat, and if you have questions for whoever I'm chatting with, to, who today is David, um, you can put in chat, and I'll ask him questions or whatever. So, um, otherwise, we're just going to be talking about what's going on, uh, who this man is as a musician, and all those things, and what he does outside of music too. So, um, so anyway, uh, so how is like your current situation? You just well, tell us first about like what you do currently. Let's talk about your current situation like like what am i like what do i do day to day right now sure yeah let's go there well uh day to day right now i i work for uh battle river railway in uh, based out of forestburg alberta um uh, yeah so not music related at all <laughs> uh but it's a job and those are hard to come by these days so um i'm quite happy for that well and you were lucky um, too that you didn't that didn't get shut down right like no, you were able to go right into that no so. we were deemed an essential service so we, we right. just had a, a whole bunch of conditions that we had to meet for health and safety but right um but yeah no no we were we were not shut down at all if anything we're we're, we're, we're busier than we normally are so. okay cool and so uh, but you just finished your first degree right at august yeah, yeah i i just finished my bachelor's degree in music um with a focus on on tuba the thing behind you the thing the thing <laughs> yeah okay and so you just and uh we're gonna listen to like a little clip from that a little later in the stream um but also in the description um there is actually a link to the your student recital so i put that in the description right. yeah. yeah um but there's also ways you can follow david too like he has his d salmon music on facebook and he has his youtube channel if he posts things i don't know what you do there but yeah i, I mean i um I, I try I haven't been very active on the on the Facebook page uh, recently um, I'll be honest I kind of forgot about it <laughs> uh, <laughs> I forgot it existed until, until a couple of months ago so well now uh, I just brought I, it I'm back just, up sorry <laughs> I just brought, no hey it, it's fine it, it's well. only uh, only be slightly you know you know scared eh, um, <laughs> but um, no, but the the YouTube channel is um, there's there's lots of stuff on there I, I i don't post you know regularly but but i do i do post stuff on there i post my own compositions i post um you know i i post my recitals are up there so there's there's lots of good stuff and i i, I do some i do some i do some uh, some some recording of the gaming some of the gaming that i do so some of that's up there too okay so so there's there's a variety of stuff it's Hopefully just a smorgasbord of it's a smorgasbord of stuff okay. I, I i should probably make a <laughs> make a separate uh a separate channel for for music stuff but yeah. but for now it's good yeah it works um and so you okay tell me about like you play tuba right but what else do you yeah. play i know you play so, a few things but i'll let right. you explain yeah it. yeah you and i you and i you and i have done we've, we've done quite a bit together yeah over the years like with last week's eric know. olson we did yeah a trio yeah. and then but anyhow you tell you you um, explain what you play <laughs> So the the tuba, obviously, yeah. um, and I'll I'll go back a little bit. In 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 high school, I excuse me, that was attractive. Wow, that's I that's didn't what, hear yeah. it. It's fine. Oh, good. That's because I was going to say that's 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 what you want on a podcast. It's that's, from the coffee, though, right? It's coffee. It is from the coffee. So you know, uh, but yeah, in high school, I, um, I I I in grade nine, I was just a tuba player and just a tuba player come just on. a tuba player you're I know. important come on <laughs> everybody play, needs a tuba play player heavy metal. yes everybody needs a tuba player yeah. in their life yeah i agree that's a that's a well said yeah um but i i found myself getting 
not so much bored as, as just wanting to kind of expand my horizons a little bit. So I, uh, I, I just, I rooted through the, through, through the music storage, um, place in the, in, in, in the, uh, down, down in the basement. And, uh, I found a bass trombone. I found a bass guitar. Hmm. Um, and, and I kind of, and I kind of started teaching myself those things and, um, and they've, uh, and they've stuck with me, um, since then. And, uh, in high school, I also, uh, taught myself how to play the drums. Um, and I did probably more percussion in high school than I did tuba playing, but, hmm. um, but that's the way it goes. We had three tuba players and not enough percussionists. So. <laughs> oh man, I guess you can't have too much tuba then. You need at least well, one. Yeah, you need you one. Can, I, you need at least one, but there, <laughs> there, there is a definite threshold for too much tuba. Yeah. And there's, and, and it's, and it's, it's, the line, the line between too much and not enough is very thin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, perfect. Uh, and so, you, would you say then you're you like your bass instruments then? Or... Yeah, I, 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 Oh, look, it's dog. <laughs> yeah, it's dog. Did he, just, did he just jump up there? No, he's been. He wanted on my lap. Don't. Oh. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, oh, he needed fantastic. on the lap. So, he um, needed on the lap. Yeah. Um, yeah. To answer your question. I belong at the bottom of every ensemble that I that I play with. That sounds negative. I'm a, I'm, I'm a bottom feeder. That's really negative. No, but bass is it's super not. important. It's it like super, it you take out the, the subwoofer from any system and you're like, it sounds so thin. You need that oh, bass. As a bass but, player, it's like, I need, you have to have bass. I don't know. My, my, my very first tuba teacher was a woman named Lon Gormley in buffalo new york she played okay. principal trombone for the for the uh for the buffalo philharmonic orchestra and um she she very very endearingly referred to herself as a bottom feeder and uh and and kind of took me took me into the fold of bottom feeders so and that is that is where i live my life and that is that is where i'm happy okay well as I'm long as you're happy but i mean some people might see it as a negative but it isn't i mean I don't see it as a negative. I, uh, I mean, I see it as unique, right? You know. Well, I, I yeah. see him. I see it as being you're the necessary of anything else. Who needs flutes? No one. But, but bottom feeders are necessary. Like like yeah. in the ocean, you know, the bottom feeders are necessary. They filter out the. I'd almost flip that though. That's where the flutes can go. They can bottom feed, and then you can. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> if if my mother's if my mother's listening right now, which I'm sure she is. You're gonna get some phone hey, calls. Steve. Well, my sister. Ooh. We talked about like she played piccolo, and I. I remember in band, I couldn't stand like the piccolo player because they were so. Everybody had to like play up to their volume, and you're like, oh, 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 oh. Uh, oh mom, I'm sorry. It was I'm just sorry. like it's you know, it's it. Okay, let's go. Let's do choir because if you have choir friends listening, because I, I have choir friends, who cares? Uh, but sopranos, right? It's like when they go to like the crazy high notes, you're like, okay, <laughs> it's okay. That was okay. It's the it's the soprano god <laughs> it's the soprano god complex. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you're talking to I I like playing bass. Like that's fun. Like yeah, the, well, that one. Look behind you. Yeah. Gonna say. Um, <laughs> and I think bass is super important, and it's, like it's the foundation. It's kind of yeah, it it, it's rhythm yeah. and like mm -hmm. a low end sound. Like I mean, the yeah. original that original before that was like before people could even afford that back in the day. They'd play like a like a the mop thing with you got, this you got the diddly bow yeah I, I i i played with a um um oh um i can't remember names anymore i just remember the name of the band the uh the black hyenas okay do you, do you remember them i don't know i played i think i i i mean it's not like you remember them it's not like we <laughs> we're, we're a splash or anything we were a group of basically misfits trying to make music together um, our only our only place to play was the Alice Hotel here in Camrose. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, we didn't have a bass player. We just had somebody on the diddly bow, <laughs> and, and just just and then, you know, and it's not so much a note; it's just kind of a thud. Funk, yeah. You know, yeah. It, it and it was it was a metal bucket with a pickup in, with a pickup screwed into the bottom, and and a mop handle and and a piece of string. So that, Google that, the diddly bow and hopefully yes. it doesn't take you someplace that you don't, don't want to be. Google um, the diddly bow. That just, oh man. It's a research project. I mean, well, this is one thing. Like, you look into, uh, I was looking to old percussion. So it's like the low boy right. and stuff. All these weird like names or things. You're like, yeah, okay. 
I don't think some of the names would fly these days, but yeah. Well, we had a the the Augustana Choir, which I was a part of for four years. We um, we did a and our Christmas our Christmas concert, um, Christmas twenty nineteen. We did a um, we did a mass we did a mass that called for an ancient um, an ancient skinned tambourine tambourine okay. slash snare drum which i'd never heard of before okay yeah, yeah. and john weeb our director um tasked as the i guess resident percussionist in the choir um he tasked me with trying to find this instrument it was, he said it'd be really cool if we could find this instrument and and use it in the show and i said yeah it would be really cool i don't know what it is so i did some research and i i found what it was it's a it was a medieval tambourine right okay. it's yeah, hundreds yeah. of years old and then it's and then i you know i spent a week on the phone trying to track one down in, in edmonton and okay. like most people are like what are you talking about i've never heard of this before so i think we just use tambourine so would it have like cat gut though like for snares or i'm or not sh- it, I, I guess originally it would have okay. um i mean I mean, the closest modern day equivalent to it is just is just a skinned tambourine, right? Right. Right. But this, but this one, this one had snares on it, had some sort of snare apparatus on it, and hmm. um, and I'm not sure what it was, but what it was supposed to sound. It it it's equivalent to a to a to a bodhran, but oh, okay, but it has but it has you know it has the jangly bells around it and the snares on it, and it looks really weird, but hmm. interesting. So Rob McMillan says, try having any band play without any bass and it sounds thin. Add one bass and the volume doubles. The power of bass. The power of the bass. Rob yeah. McMillan. Thank you very much, sir. That's um, another man who might be coming on one of these streams. But um, <laughs> so, uh, and that's another man. Well, you play with the, well, played. How are we played. saying this? With the big band, right? With the big band. Because yeah. <laughs> right now it's like, where are the gigs? Well, What's happening? Yeah. yeah. So I guess I did, I did a season and a half. On, uh, on, um, on bass trombone, trombone four. Okay. Yeah. Without a bass trombone because I didn't have the money <laughs> to buy one, so I just bought a really, really cheap um, tenor trombone with an F attachment. Okay. And and just any low notes, I just faked it. Just so. pretend it. Yeah. <laughs> just pretend. <laughs> like you said, you so. don't have to. Sometimes bass, you don't even know. The frequency is so low, who cares? Well, exactly. You know, a, a, a lot of my job is just making it up, faking it. Yep. So. And hoping nobody, nobody notices. And hoping but... nobody notices. Well, 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 eventually you get good enough that, you know, nobody nobody can tell that you're faking it. So. Mm-hmm. And then and at that point, you know you've made it. As, <laughs> as both as both a musician and a liar. So. Yeah. But <laughs> then that's the awkward thing. If you actually listen to yourself, like I've been doing some recordings and I record myself individual tracks. And when I just... But one track sometimes I'm like oh my intonation's off if I'm doing it on the bass I'm like oh but then when yeah. everything's there it's like okay you can't really notice <laughs> this this works I get, I, I get it <laughs> it fits in uh perfect so yeah so the big band you played for a season and a half I'd like probably just yeah. came in then because I've only been playing for like this almost about the same amount of time not well, that yeah much. yeah yeah you you came in pretty soon no you know no we both we both started in the same season did we okay yeah because their 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 bass player left left just right. i i played i played the last show of the season before before okay. i before i started as kind of a, a trial run i guess and okay. um, and then they invited me they invited me back for the next season and that's when that's when you showed up too yeah i would have been playing with what was it remembrance day show or whatever but then I, that's when i got my eyes done so i had to start yeah after that but yeah yeah okay and so yeah you it's that one's gonna be interesting figuring out well because you're actually because now you're going to your next degree though right like you're going yeah yeah um but i might i i <laughs> there's there's so much there's so much ambiguity in the information that's out there right now for for the u of a in particular yeah um as to what classes are going to look like next uh for 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 the beginning of next year right. um you know i'm i'm supposed to be starting my my two-year bachelor's degree in education um in edmonton uh but i i I received an email a couple days ago that said that looked that said some classes will be 
online delivery, but not all. And there was okay. no list of what of what those classes would be that they're going to be in person or not. And and so basically, if classes are all going to be online, I'm just going to stay in stay in cameras until until Christmas and, and commute and if you I, have to. Or and yeah, like and then for... and then commute you know a day here a day there if I have yeah. to. But no, that's the crazy um, thing. It seems like things are changing quickly but it's like yeah. the next day it could be like bam okay everything's online you're like oh <laughs> well i mean when all this first started I, I mean you know every every day we were we were getting more information policies policies were changing yeah and and those policies were then changing again the next day and, and oh so it, was, it it's, was a really confusing time it's still confusing i think for everyone yeah i think yeah. even with this reopening phase it's like People don't know still. What are the guidelines for oh. some people? It's it's crazy. Yeah. And I that's where, I mean, that's part of why I was like, I need to go private just because of that. Because the what happened yeah. was, I went pro, uh, I taught one on the Monday, and the next day was like, okay, we're closing the studio. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, and I mean, this way, this way you have a little bit, you have a little I have control. bit of control. Yeah, well, and I can like, is, control, if, if we have to be isolated again and say the fall, I can flick the switch and go all online if I have yeah. to, that sort of thing. And, and you've, you know, you've got the setup and everything ready to go. So it's, yep. it wouldn't be too So, different. and that programming, if anyone's watching, if they're looking at lessons, I'll be ha releasing my phase one, whatever, whatever. That's my advertising. Anyhow, back to David. <laughs> <laughs> I have some phasing that for my own lessons. Break. Yeah, this is summer programming <laughs> I'm looking at. But anyhow, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's crazy because like you were going to be, the big band, we're not even sure. We, we did that meeting a while ago talking about like dates, kind of October would be mm -hmm. starting, but. I, I doubt it. I, we, yeah exactly like i mean i look at even well you're going into education and like yeah. band classes how are those going to look <laughs> like i don't I, even... I mean i don't even want to think about that I, I it's mean, crazy. i'm lucky i'm not doing any of my practicum work yeah in this first year that's all second year stuff well so. and the thing is you'll probably get out look at you know if, if we want to be optimistic we'll have the vaccine so by the time you're actually would be in the teaching field it'll all be good <laughs> well hopefully <laughs> but it's Who just knows? like kids are gross right so they'll be in the band class <laughs> wow <laughs> so they'll be like in the like i mean i teach just like guitar and bass and so there isn't like spit flying everywhere you heard Except, it here folks hot take kids are gross they are uh but like <laughs> band classes too like you're right beside somebody and you have your if you want to take the book from trudeau you're breathing moistly or talking moistly or whatever and it's like <laughs> It's, it's... I, I mean, but it, I mean, you're right, though. I mean, wind instruments yeah. definitely are, 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 I mean, this is just a disease spread <laughs> machine right here. You if know. you want COVID-19, so, just, wait, you haven't had it, the... so I shouldn't say that, but. Yeah, I haven't had it as far as I know. <laughs> I mean, I mean oh. and this is the part where I, where I start coughing and sneezing, but you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just going to be in, uh, looking at that sort of thing, the future of music in general like gigs and stuff yeah. for the gigging musicians or anything um because it's not just like the band itself it's the audience how many people yeah. can oh yeah mm -hmm. it's nuts like that's why we're all there's all these virtual consoles yeah. concerts you know, going on but i will say that the i i personally didn't find it all that weird doing doing a virtual concert yeah um so yeah i i i thoroughly enjoyed I thoroughly enjoyed that experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work to put together in a remote way, figuring out, I mean, I had to, I had planned a big recital, a big in-person recital and I had it all planned and right. I had people, I had people involved. I, yeah, I had you involved in it. Yep. And, yep. and, you know, within, within probably a month, I had to throw all that out and kind of start over again. And, yeah. Yeah, so, that was. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, how many people were involved with that? Then you had, you just three. It was Toba? myself, Toba Olson, yeah. and Juanita Holm. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, French horn player. Yeah, yeah. So, and again, we'll be near the end of the stream. We'll just take a clip from that, watch that. Um, but yeah, that was that's kind of a crazy thing too with the gig thing. Like, um, I've been preparing with a few people, two different things. But the one was like a Dixieland thing in Wetaskiwin, yeah. and that was like shut down <laughs> yeah like, it's like oh we've been practicing since like i don't even know when january december before christmas but it was like well, it was done. it was totally new yeah, yeah well and it was just some of the big band like a small group from the big band that just right. okay 
and yeah just like yep okay now it's not not going it's like oh yeah well we'll look at mother's day that's past now well you know (laughs) well yeah i mean i mean you can at this point at this point you can only really plan almost week by week I don't know some, exactly. So but, it's day, it's uh, some day, sometimes it's just day by day. Well, and so. I mean, the hardest thing. I mean, I don't know. If, what, what's the, when's the last time you practiced music? Oh, <laughs> um, we talked about this a bit. You said we you talked haven't. about this a bit. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I have a decent excuse. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, work, work has definitely made it so that. I'm not, I'm not practicing anywhere near as much. Right. Um, you know, I, I mean, I work eight hours a day in the elements outside and you know, I get home. By the time, time, yeah. By the time I get home, I'm, I, you know, it's kind of, you have, have no dinner fuel and, left. Have, have dinner and exactly have dinner and go to bed pretty much <laughs> and do it all again the next day. But, um, um, you know, I, I, when I was able to get into the practice rooms in Augustana, I was doing some piano work. Um, and, um, you know, definitely doing a lot of tuba work leading up to the recital. Um, but yeah, definitely, I've definitely slowed down. Do you here. find like without sort of something to drive toward, like a recital, like a gig or anything? Do you find that made like yeah. why do I have to practice? Yeah, yeah. It when when there's, you know, normally I I'd, I'd have a summer, not full of of gigs, but but you know I'd have. I have a couple of things here and there that I'm, that I'm working towards and that would, that would make it a lot easier to, to sit down and practice. Right. So yeah, it's, and I think, I don't think I'm the only one who feels that way. I think there's a lot of musicians who are this guy find find, (laughs) Yeah. Find just finding it hard to find the motivation to to do that. It's not, it's understandable. Yeah. And I mean, as I was talking to Eric last week, like, the market, according to Alberta guidelines, there can't be any entertainers at the market apparently for now. So Eric and I won't be doing the busking yet, whatever. Yeah. But there's thought like, there's discussions of like doing some jamming. You know, we. Mm. I don't think you came to one, but at the gazebo we did some jams in at Mirror. Yeah, Lake. I wasn't able to make to, to come to come to those. I was it was too bad. They seemed right. fun. And so maybe we can do some socially distance jams there. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> if it's like like today it's lovely outside and you know oh, it's fantastic. if we figured out a few days like that i think if we just spaced it out a lot then mm-hmm. you know they don't have the piano out there i've been walking around there a few times and they don't have the piano yet but we don't need a piano yeah. just bring your tuba if, or whatever you want like you could bring, bring my tuba <laughs> whatever you want <laughs> you know um but yeah just it's almost like I miss the idea of playing with others as, as like, Oh, me too. As it, immatures it, that might sound like a kid. I like playing, but yeah, it's, Oh, it's, I mean, music is a, is a hugely social activity. Yeah. Um, uh, and, um, you know, it's why I wanted, you know, I, I wanted more people involved in my, in my recital. Yeah. Um, just because of that social aspect. Right. You know, you know, at that, by the time I did the, did that recital, you know, we had been in online classes for, for, you know, for, for, for several weeks. And, yeah. um, you know, and I, it, it, I, I'd been spending pretty much every day at home and, and it was by, you know, not, you know, pretty much by myself. So, mm. um, yeah, so yeah, that, it was, it was really, really nice to be able to, to make music with other people for even just, you know, an hour on a Sunday. So. Yeah, and live versus like and live. Yeah, because like even in a meeting, there's you know latency and stuff. So you get like yeah. even like point one second is gonna throw everything off. So yeah, and even if you do like those, I record my track, you record yours, and go across. Like oh, those yeah. aren't, aren't the same. Well, I can talk about that too. We the, the choir did a did a did a virtual I saw, choir. Oh, I should link thing. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you go on YouTube uh, to the, uh, it's just it's just the Augustana Choir. Um, it should come up. Um, that video and lots of others are up there. Um, but yeah, that was that was an experience. I'll tell you, that was huge. Um, something that I'd never that I'd never done before. I'm definitely an amateur when it comes to. Um, you know, editing sound and editing video. And, um, so it was a huge learning experience for me, but it was a lot of fun. I had a really good time putting it all together. So 
Okay, I'm just going to sound terrible. No, I mean the the pro I just always found the problem with that is just it get, there's no person to reflect off of, right? I always yeah. I always find like when I've been doing them by myself or with other people, it's like I can't feed off somebody else. I have to like mm -hmm. I put a click track, I put like a skeleton yeah. track of like some parts and stuff, but it's just not it's not the same. You don't get the no, uh, the, the person the personality and stuff like that. So there's yeah, you don't get you don't get to form any sort of connection with another person right yeah that way so it's just you in a room singing into a microphone so i'm just gonna put that here form your connection with your microphone <laughs> well yeah and sometimes like essentially you'll get the file or whatever to work with and then that's it you don't actually see the person it's like here's the file yeah. of me singing and it's like i wish i could talk to you instead <laughs> <laughs> Well, because, I mean, I, I think of it in, like, a bigger group setting where Big Ben or something, if somebody makes a mistake and you can look at someone and, like, see the facial express or, uh, expression or something <laughs> and everyone just, like, has their reactions and choirs and bands, whatever, you know something went wrong that you, even in live performance, you rehearsed, you messed up the same spot again, and you look at each other like, oh, you raise your eyebrow or whatever. Yeah. And... It's just, it's, it's funny because, like, you say that and I, I, I just have this image of, of Sandra Hall, our... Sandra is our director in the big band. And I have this image of Sandra Hall in my head giving me the stink eye because I've made the same, <laughs> because I've made the same mistake like two or three times in a row because, you know, it's a bass trombone and I don't know what I'm doing. Well, and I think you're a bit of a troublemaker in the big band anyway, I think. Oh, that's <laughs> not true at all, but it definitely is. Oh. No, I, I well, because I sit, I, sit I sit next to Eric and Rob McMillan. <laughs> And, and and the three of us just feed off each other, well, especially Rob and I. Rob and I are like children. And Eric's just sitting there in the middle of you two like, I don't want to be <laughs> Rob, if you're listening, you're a bad influence on me, but never stop being you. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, that's but that's the fun, like the social aspect of it, right? Um, oh, As much yeah. as you're going to play, it's like sometimes... I've always I've always struggled myself. I've struggled with like going into a setting where it's like really serious. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't want to be here. I mean, when it's really serious like that, I there there you know it's it's because you're. You know it's because can you hear that noise in the back, that background noise? A little, no? not really. Okay, good. It's my fridge. My fridge is getting ready to die, and, okay. and whenever the compressor clicks on it, it, it makes this horrible racket. It's a little. It's um, it's fine. Yeah. I can shut it off. If it's no, fine. you're fine. It's okay. Okay. Um. Well, what was I talking about? Um, serious situations. Right. Um, I mean, if it's a really serious musical situation, um, you know, if people are really taking it seriously, it's because, you know, everybody, everybody has the same goal in mind, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's for, it's for something big, right? You know, we, you know, we, we might, and we might goof off and that's, that's not to say that, that, that another you know that that another musical endeavor is 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 inferior to to another one right, right yeah um you know but in the big band i mean you know we we have fun you know we're all we're all we're all friends well we, and we i guess maybe the word isn't music. like not serious but it's like there's a lightheartedness i guess to yeah, all of us yeah. like the, I mean, there's definitely I, like we need to get this done we need to go but it's like there's yeah. still like whew, okay there's like a balance there whereas yeah. i've been in some situations where there's almost like a hostile air or something where it's Ooh. just like people are just like you know, like, um, when I was in the choir, there'd be situations that there's, like, two more rehearsals before a concert. And it'd just be like, who don't mess up your part. <laughs> I mean, I mean, two rehearsals to a concert, one rehearsal to one yeah, rehearsal yeah. before a concert. That's that's serious. That's time yeah, yeah. to, you know, knuckle down. Put, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Put your nose to the grindstone and get it right. Yeah. But, I mean, but hostile? No. It should never. The, the, the act of making music should never should, should, should never be a hostile endeavor. Yeah. Um, it you know it music at its core should be should be fun. You should you should have fun with it. Oh, I agree with that. I think. Um, I mean, and quite honestly, I I mean I don't I don't think I would have stuck stuck with music for as long as I have um, if I didn't have a good if I wasn't having a good time. Um, you know, I do, I do this because I like it, but I also do this because it's just a ton of fun Yeah. and the, and the connections, the people that I meet, the connections that I make, um, you know, that's, it's priceless. That's, that's all it is. 
Well, yeah, and I, I think that's partially like I was in the classical voice program, and I, I think yeah. part of it, I just didn't like the classical part of it, so I wasn't having a good time. I was stressing sure. myself out, and and then when it comes yeah. to singing, you're standing there and you're like sweating, and you're like, where do what do I do with my hands? And yeah. um, but when I learned how to like when I taught myself guitar and bass and drums and all those <clears> things, it was like, oh, now I'm having fun. And, yeah. You know. Well, and I, I mean, I did you get your start as a class? You got your start as a classical singer. Uh, well, that's what yeah. I did at Augustana. Actually, I was okay. looking at going to drama instead, but then okay, you know, I had yeah. the choice. Well, I, I, yeah, I got my start as a in in music as a as a as a classical classical singer, if you were a choral singer, I guess. Yeah. Well, and then choral is what. Yeah, like I was doing. Um. Yeah. I was in choirs forever, but yeah. And like I should have maybe thought about going to like a contemporary music program or something instead of like McEwen, but you know, mm-hmm. I was young. And I come stupid. I come from a really, really musical family. Everybody in my everybody in my immediate family is they're all they're all singers trained trained to, you know, to some to, to, to some degree. They've all had right. some sort of vocal training, musical training, right? Um and um so <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying that that my parents would have would have said, no, you cannot be a doctor, but they would have said, okay, you can be a doctor, but if you don't do music, you know, I'll be really mad at you. <laughs> well, and that, there's an important thing though. You had solid family support, right, with your music. Like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah they were 100%. like, probably if either way, like if you would have said yes or no to music, they would have. Oh, I, if I if I had if I had said you know no, I don't want to pursue pursue music as a career you know they would they would have said okay fine yeah. but 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 it needs to be part of your life in some way you know even if even if it's just playing in a concert band once a week right yeah or, or you know stuff like that um you'd still have music it just be wouldn't be your yeah i'd yeah. still have music it just wouldn't be my main thing but yeah. um and that's i mean that's and that's kind of the way that's that's the way it normally is in you know in the summertime right when I'm doing my my, my work at the railway you know music um, takes a bit of a, a bit of a secondary role you yeah know, while I focus on the railway stuff so but it's, and I mean music careers especially right now are a little like yeah it's dicey so um, for you having a job that you can make money to pursue your music is really yeah. important yeah yeah by the way Rob's <laughs> uh, saying true dat he he a bad boy and children. We be playful. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> Rob, Rob, getting getting down with the uh, with the with the you know with with the lingo of the young kids there. <laughs> yeah, or or just internet grammar and stuff, you know. Perfect. Internet grammar, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think there's that importance too, just being keeping music. <sighs> Music is always there, I think. Like, it's one of those things. And if you can keep it, even if you have to, you have to make the money so you can pursue yeah. it, that's important too. But if you're yeah. able to make it a career, I mean, I mean, I mean, for me though, the, the day that music from personally, the day that music becomes just about the money is yeah. the day that I need to stop doing music. No, there's truth. To that. Cause it means that I'm, it means that I'm not enjoying it anymore. Um, you know, the money, the, <laughs> let's face it as, as a musician, the money's never going to be amazing. No, but, no. but, but honestly, that's, you know, you know, people ask me why, you know, why, did, why, why do you want to be a musician? And, and it's like, you're not going to make any money. And it's like, so that's not the point. You're completely missing the point. You know, it, it, it I'm not, you know, I, I'm aware that I'm not going to make any money, but, it, but it's not about that. Right. You know, you don't do this because you want to get rich. No. You know, no. Uh, you know, a, any a, artist below yeah. below one percent of all the musicians in the world will 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 go on to make a million dollars or whatever in music. I think that's even yeah. with YouTube. And that and stuff. might be being generous with YouTube and stuff now. Like with all, there's a lot of music out there. I think it's even harder to yeah. make that. It's probably even harder. There's so much yeah. competition nowadays. Oh yeah. So, you know. Yeah, you're you either in the you're, you're in that because you like it. Exactly. And I think then that's the sad part of gigs and rehearsals being kind of yeah. on the down low for now. Um, but I mean, it's always there. It'll always, yeah. it'll come back. We'll yeah. be there. But I mean, the, the other side of that is that, you know, we can't, it's, it's difficult to get the motivation to practice. It's difficult, you know, you can't, can't do gigs, can't do rehearsals, but um, 
you know, recently I've I've been doing a lot more composing and a lot more arranging, and right. um, cool. And so I'm I'm able to, you know, I'm able to sit down and focus on that, right? Nice. And say, you know, and say I'm gonna, you know, this is this is a song that I that I really want to arrange for two and piano or for or for you know brass quartet or something like that. And, and so that's a goal that I can work towards, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's allowed, I mean, this whole thing has allowed a bit of um, ability to do some projects that you wouldn't normally do, yeah. I guess. So yeah. it's because it's like, well, I'm stuck at home, so, hmm. the best of it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, that, and again, you come out of the other end and you'll have some things you've been working on that projects yeah. you can share. And I think that's and really hopefully, important. Hopefully we'll all be more rounded human beings at the, uh, at the end of all this. Yeah, but then we or maybe not. <laughs> maybe we'll all be worse off. I don't know. Maybe we'll all be like in bunkers with. I mean, we're in Canada, so we won't have rifles or anything. But we'll just be in bunkers, we'll just with rocks. <laughs> we'll just revert to caveman time. <laughs> you, you no touch my food. Oh, you could convert. No, you wouldn't want to convert your tube into some sort of cannon or something. No. I may have to. Yeah, it could launch potatoes. It could launch potatoes at my end. <laughs> there you go. Because apparently we have a surplus of potatoes. Yeah, I mean, potatoes are growing lovely this year. A giant spud gun. <laughs> so, um, when it comes to music then, what would you say are your, like, what kind of styles, genres, bands, artists, anything like that? What kind of, where would you say you find yourself in that sort of, like, who do you, who are your influences? What kind of music do you like? Um... I mean, the only, for, for a long time, the only thing that I was doing was classical. Okay. Um, it really wasn't until I moved to, um, to Camrose and started exploring the music scene here okay. uh, that I really got into to more things. I did, I did a little bit of, I did some different stuff in high school. I did some jazz. I, I, I did, some, I did some, some rock and roll. Um, you know, but I, I mean, in Cam, in Camrose was where I did, I did my first punk band. That was the, that was okay. the Black Hyenas, right? Okay. And I, I never would have even imagined that I would have done something like that. And until somebody said, Hey, do you, do you want to do this? Um, so yeah, for the longest time it was just classical and, um, and, but I think, I think right now I'm, I'm happy with just classical and jazz. Those okay. are kind of the two things that I understand. Um, as far as influences go, um, I mean, on the tuba, there's, there's, there's a couple. There's, there's Don Don Harry is, um, is actually the partner of Lon Gormley, my first teacher. Um, he, uh, up until recently, he just retired, was the principal tuba player for the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra. Okay. Um, and um, he wasn't my instructor, but but I I, I hung out with him a lot. Um, I, I got to know him a little bit um, as I was uh, early on playing the tuba and um, you know he would pass on some some wisdom here and there and um, and uh, so he's definitely somebody who who I've looked up to as a tuba player um, and then there are some other people who are um, who are just famous tuba players who uh, have developed who have developed uh, breathing techniques and playing techniques uh, of their own and um, and you know, and they're and they're really, really well founded and and really good, really good things to have. So people like uh, Roger Bobo uh, from the United States um, is one of those people. He he developed a a breathing technique that's that's now a standard technique across the board. So um, so yeah, um, influence is there for sure. Um, in the jazz world, um, I mean, I, I I tend to gravitate towards brass players being being a brass player myself yeah yep. so um like maynard ferguson uh, a trumpet player uh, it just one of from the from the era of trump of jazz trumpet players who uh, you know could play these screaming high notes and 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 could play them for hours and you have no idea how they're able to do it hmm. um eventually it turned out that most of them were actually doing a lot of damage to their faces by doing this but um, you know, you 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 could look at pictures of Maynard Ferguson af, right after right after a right after a show, and his face is just all, you know, 
all out of whack, right? Because he's been just destroying his lips. Hmm. So, but um, doesn't it doesn't take away from the fact that these these are incredible musicians, right? Yeah. So. Now, I, I want jazz because I'm kind of into that too. What what kind of yeah. jazz are you into? Because there's um, like that seems like it's such a huge. <laughs> that's 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 a, that's a that's a big question. Like, do you, are you like old question. school Dixieland swing, or are you kind of well, more modern cool. contemporary? So, man, it's a little bit of everything. Yeah. I in high school, I actually was part of a Dixieland band in high school. Okay. Um, and um, that was my first experience with it, and I kind of, I won't say I fell in love with it, but but I it. It was a very it was it was big interest for me and I really I really enjoyed playing with that group. Mm. Um, but I would say, on the whole, um, I'm probably mostly into big band stuff. Okay. Um, um, and that's kind of that's kind of the whole, the whole thing. You know, everything from you know 30s and 40s up to, you know, up to stuff that was written within within the last 20 years. Right? Okay. So. Like, would you say more like, Glenn Miller style, or like, are you into? Oh. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm, I love Glenn Miller, right? Uh, right? Glenn Miller's orchestra is 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 a staple of you know, of of, of jazz music. Um, but I mean, I mean, I also listen to, there's a there's a bass player named Victor Wooten, who I'm sure, yeah, who oh, I'm yeah. sure you know, yeah. um, who does amazing things with a, with a bass guitar, but was also part of an amazing group called called Weather Report, right, right, for for years and. Um, and I mean, weather and weather report, um, you know, weather, weather report has, has a song called Birdland and Birdland is one of my, is it called Birdland? I, I'm thinking of called? like Jacob Pistorius did Birdland with, um, Jacob Pistorius. Sorry. Yeah. You're right. My, you're right. My, my, my mistake. On his cheap um, little squire base. On his cheap little squire base. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I found that, and I found that out after I bought my cheap little Squire bass, and I was like, "Cool, I'm almost playing Jaco Pistorius' bass." He did some crazy stuff with that bass too. Oh, he was nuts. He was insane. But like his bass, he like put like varnish on the fretboard and stuff. And it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, he could play it though, so that's the only thing that yeah. matters. But then there's Victor Wooten with his just massive dinner plate hands. Well, playing, and you know, playing these full songs on on like a six string bass. And oh, he wow. knows what, and you watch him like. And he's he's a good educator too, like Victor Wooten. You watch some of his clinics and stuff, and he just and he's a really chill guy. It's just he plays like he's enjoying what he's doing. You can tell he He feels the groove. He doesn't even think about the notes he's playing. He's just playing. I mean, he wouldn't. I mean, again, he he wouldn't. He he wouldn't have been around for so long if he wasn't having a good time. So no, he. (laughs) Yeah, there's some really good stuff. Like there's one where he does about subdivisions on bass and things like that, where it's like, yeah, anyhow up victor boot and he's just yeah incredible definitely endless endless content there oh yeah he's still doing his thing yeah. um but yeah so you're the, see the thing is i've always found like i like i think i like some of the older jazz ragtime stuff a bit better than contemporary just because it's simpler it seems there's like a little more yeah there's less it's... weird dissonance that goes on sometimes and there's usually a rhythm mm-hmm. a meter that you can feel a little oh, better. yeah i mean there, there there's definitely a a a you know a section of jazz music that that's that's all that weird stuff i can remember a couple of years ago um i i i, I attended the um um this the the jazz festival in saskatoon okay yeah uh in the summer which i hope is happening this year but probably not um because it's always a great time but um but yeah i i, I stumbled into a I stumbled into a show, a free one of the free concerts. Okay. And it was just this avant-garde guy with a saxophone kind of screeching for <laughs> half an hour. I've watched yeah. It's like and, one and song is like so yeah. long and you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's like some of the show was cool. Some of the show was like, okay, yeah, this is this is a neat way to think about to think about, you know, this certain rhythm or or whatever. Um, or this is or this is this is this is a unique way to play to play this yeah, instrument. Yeah, yeah. But some of but some of it is just screeching and just it's like put it into thirty seconds and I'll be good. <laughs> it's like it almost it, it it almost feels like noise for the sake of noise and yeah. it's like which, they know what they're doing, but it's like you know, as a listener, you're like, I don't know. yeah, it's you know, 
<laughs> you know, I mean, I just, I just spent the last four years hanging out with Roger Admiral. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, for those who don't know Roger Admiral, Admiral, one you should know Roger Admiral. Look him up. Um, but he's he's an incredible pianist. He's an incredible sight reader, sight reader, mm-hmm. an incredible educator. Um, but just it just is is really really into you know twentieth century piano music. Yeah, yeah. And some of it's really cool. Some of it uses prepared piano. Some of it, you know, you know, knocking on knocking on the sides of the piano, knocking on the lid. You know, um, you know, plucking, plucking yeah, yeah. piano strings with different with different apparatus apparatus apparatuses. I don't know, whatever the plural, whatever the plural is there. Um, but you know, I I I took his I took his modern his modern music class. Mm-hmm. Did you did you did you take that class? I wasn't. Uh, he wasn't at the university when I. Oh, was he wasn't there, there yet. No. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, but yeah, he he taught a a modern music class, which in this class culminates. 90% of this class is just is learning is learning a score learning a piece of music for you know a piece of 20th century avant-garde oh, that music would, that seems painful <laughs> I the one that, that I just had, to me oh and it was nerve-wracking and I I mean I hope he's not I hope he's, I hope he's not listening and if, and if he is I'm sorry Roger but I mean I'll I, get I you won't back say, I'll... he will <laughs> I mean I, I, I won't say that it was the most fun thing I've ever done. Yeah. Um, did I learn a lot? Sure. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Do I do I do I recognize the value in it? Yeah. But um, the value and the skill that goes into doing that, yeah. I definitely understand that. But it's for sure not my favorite thing. In the world. Right. And <laughs> to your ear, it might not be good, but the technical thing of it is like, oh, that's cool. Technically, it's 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 incredible. I mean, it's like Roger, listening to you know, Dream watching, Theater or something. Yeah. You're like, like Roger, watching Roger play this music is 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 a journey right it's 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 incredible so rob brought, brought up two names harvey phillips harvey phillips i don't know and arnold jacobs with question i know arnold i, I know yeah. of arnold jacobs okay um yeah yeah Ar- 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 arnold jacobs is a um yeah Ar- arnold jacobs another one another one of those brass players who who um you know who developed a um you know, I, I maybe Rob can 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 correct me on this, but he was Chicago Symphony, and developed uh, the brass the brass technique, you know, the breathe the breathing technique that, that the whole trumpet section uses now, okay. I think, and, ha- and has and has used for decades, and they're one of the most powerful tr- they're, they're one of the most powerful trumpet sections in the world, hmm. um, because they use because they use use this technique, and maybe Rob can confirm that. Um, Harvey Phillips uh, was an American tuba player. He served as a distinguished right. professor of the Jacobs School of Music at Indiana University. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. No. Yeah. Anyhow. Um, but yeah, I think that's where part of, for me, I like, I like music that, you know, generally like it has, you can feel like the, the phrasing and the patterns a bit more. Mm-hmm. That might just be me, though. Yeah. I mean, I can count, like, you know, 716 or whatever, like, some weird yeah. times and, like, changing times, but it's like, just give me a good groove and I'm set. Yeah. Give me some I mean, old I, James I mean... Brown and it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um... some of those just groove on the same, like, pattern forever. Like, they yeah. don't change or build. They're just like, yep, here we go. Well, well, and there's something about the, I mean, the, the musicianship in in groups like that yeah. is is just insane and i mean these are people that are that that when when they're in the studio recording an album they are reading each other's minds yeah i i mean they they and and i mean i I've, I've had that experience a couple of times and and it's 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 magical i mean i yeah. I've, I've tova olson and i have done a lot of work together over the years she's she's been my she's been my she's been my my long-suffering accompanist um, over the say, last four you're, years, you're saying she suffered under you? Is that what you're oh, saying? Oh, probably. <laughs> I pro- I'm sure. I'm sure. I made her life difficult. Okay. Um, I'm a tuba player. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, but there are there are times when we're when we're we're playing together and and you know something some you know we'll 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 jive we'll mesh and and just things start happening and and we start you know doing things at the same time. And, yeah, it, it's 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 a really cool cool feeling. Well, and and that's where you, um 
I find that's really handy, especially when you're playing the same person over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, and you kind of know the music you're playing. You can mm-hmm. do that. Like if you, if the thing I've always found is you're in an ensemble and ever, some people are buried in their music and you're like trying to make communicate with them, like with your yeah. eyes or face and they're not looking. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I know you're rushing, but I guess I have to follow your time because you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. But it's all, I mean, it's all, and that's, I mean, <laughs> music is music making music is 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 one of the i don't know in some ways it's 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 more in some ways it's a better form of communication than than talking right yeah um you know you know you can you can communicate so much to another person with this and um it's it, it's incredible oh yeah and that's where i'm i'm a person just in general, I prefer video calls to anything because it's like, oh yeah, you can see that I'm being sarcastic or that I'm yeah. confused or I, I I see that right now. I, I get it. You're being sarcastic. Um, I understand. But no, I think that that's an important thing too because I think there's so many divisions and um whether it's politics or beliefs or anything, it's just when you can just like, who cares about all that other stuff? Let's just play music. Like it's huge. Yeah. Music music will save the world as 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 our, as Doctor Ardell Reese would say. As long as you know, you aren't doing stupid lyrics that are stupid, then it's fine. <laughs> stupid lyrics that are stupid. No, I, that, well, I mean, that's stupid. There's a few crazy. There's people who write some really interesting songs. Yeah. Interesting <laughs> Let's just say it that there. way. Well, and it's not even poetry anymore in my brain. It's, poetry, yeah. those things. Somebody was comparing like modern hip hop to like something like uh, like George Harrison writing the song something, like the mm-hmm. words are talking about love in that song versus love in modern hip-hop which is like hmm it's, that's not there's love no, there's, no, there, there's no comparison <laughs> yeah <laughs> so reasons. but yeah like words have a huge effect too but i think it's both yeah. that i think there's definitely that when you're just even jamming instrumentally like mm-hmm. feeding off each other learning about each other that actually you can learn a lot about a person through yeah. music mm-hmm. i mean you know you know the words the words in a song the song has words without the without the you know, without the instrumental aspect, the words are just words. Yep. And and they're you know, they have meaning to the person who wrote the words, but there, but, yep. but but to you and I, they have no meaning until or until the... we hear until we hear the whole thing put together and then we can and then and then we can draw our we can draw our own conclusions about the meaning. Right. Yep. Well and that's so. that's the truth. Like um as being a Beatles nerds like John Lennon would say he wrote he would write a song he'd have why he meant the words and things like that like the reason for it but that would that isn't necessarily that isn't what it's supposed to mean to anyone else like yeah. it's just personal I, to him but yeah you might a get something else out of it. yeah a lyricist should not should not be should not be writing a song that that you know you know with with some idea of how of how everybody should 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 interpret it yeah. right you know the point the point of the point of music is is that is that you're able to to draw your own conclusions about about yeah. the meaning behind a song. So. Well, yeah, like I think opening your mind to possibilities if you want to be that crazy without the need of, you know, helpful assistance in the medical way. Yeah. Um, but just opening your brain to, because you can feel things a little more, you can express a little differently mm-hmm. there. Um, so we're just kind of getting to, you know, it's almost been an hour. So I'm feeling like we should probably start closing out. Oh. A. <laughs> um, but so to close out, though, we're gonna do. I'm gonna play a clip from your tuba recital. Sure. Um, do you want to explain it real quick? So the, um, like I said earlier on, the, the the recital that 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 that's up on YouTube now, and you're gonna see a clip of it was wildly different. Um, originally, originally, I, I I had barbershop, I had a barbershop quartet, I had. I had jazz, I had classical, I had a little bit of everything in there. Um, but, um, but yeah, but COVID-19 shut everything down. So I had to, in, in a very short amount of time, redo the whole thing. Um, the piece that you're going to hear, the little clip of the piece that you're going to hear is a, it's a Norwegian uh, folk song, uh, which was originally written for organ. Um, I, uh, I forget the name of the tune, actually. Um, um let me see the description uh is yeah. this later in the what is it what time stamp? this is later in the show this is this is in quote the second half of the show okay so would uh, it be like so is it the there's like psalm 19 mirad 
Mira that Dita? One, yeah, that one. No, that no, one? no, 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 not, not Mira. You can play Mira Dita, but that's not the one that I sent you. Uh, well, is it Psalm 19? Or is it the... Well, I don't know what that is. An, an old tune from... That one, that one, Del Carlia. An old yeah, tune there you from, go. Yeah, I'm not pronouncing that. Carlia. Yeah, there, it, the whole, the, the title is in Norwegian, so it's, it's I, not easy to pronounce. It's been um, almost 18 years since I took Norwegian, so... <laughs> Yeah, but I um, so I I found this. I've been listening to this to this song, um, you know, on my personal Spotify playlist, and I and and I, ever since I found it, I've been thinking, wow, this would sound really cool for tuba and organ, and uh, so I think I think less than a week before the before we before we we, we recorded the recital, I I quickly arranged rearranged the organ piece for tuba and organ, and sent it to Tova and said will this work? I really want this to work. And she said, yeah, let's do it. And, and here it is. So, okay. Um, yeah, I'll play a few minutes of this and yeah, let me sure. just get this up here. Um, yeah, so that song is, um, yeah, it's just, it's a really, really, it, the, the best, the best way to describe it is, is, um, is haunting, I think. Um, you know, the, um, I can't, I, 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 I must admit I'm not, I don't really, I'm not an expert on the, ori on the origins of the song, um, but it, it, it's a haunting song, it's a beautiful song, um. There are some fantastic arrangements of it for for um, for organ and trumpet, which are 
which are really fine. Um, and uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed uh, doing this for it's my first thing for organ and tuba, and uh, I thought it was a really really cool cool mix. So I really like doing it. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. This was great. Hey, that'd be great. I I do my best. I'll I'll be better. I promise. <laughs> yes. No, I think I've said everything I need to say. I, uh, you know, I, I just, I hope that we can get back to uh, doing some actual music here soon. So, okay, apparently I I've got we're your, all kind of feeling it. I forgot your mic on, so I'm going to redo this real quick. So, um, let me do this again because my mic was not on apparently. Uh oh. Huh. So let's talk about this then. Closing out. Hi, David. I'm going to say goodbye to you again. Hopefully, next time I can bring you back at again. some point. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> now that people can actually hear me, boy. Um, there's a lot of buttons to press. So uh, you can follow David at Facebook on his D Salmon music thing in the description. Uh, YouTube, he has a bunch of stuff there. Uh, his graduate wing recital. So if you want to see the full thing, uh, you'll be able to go to the link in the description. Um, there's the Augustine Acquire YouTube channel down there too. Then you'll have, if you want to follow me and all those things, support me there. Um, yeah. So, um, and next week I'll be bringing it on... Myra Marshall from Riverjacks and stuff like that. Um, same time, Saturday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Um, yeah, hopefully I didn't miss anything in the second time with my mic actually on. So do you want to say anything before we close out? No, I um, I think it's all been said. I just, I like I, if anybody heard me before, um, I just, I hope that uh, we're able to get back to doing some, some real music here soon. I agree with that. Uh, it's, been, it's been too long. So. Yeah, and I and I have a few music things. I released a video of me playing everything again. One of those. <laughs> I have a few more in, in but um, that I'm working on. But and I might do a video on how to make those. So, um, but yeah. So I'll catch you all next time. Hopefully, everyone stay safe. Definitely. And as it's nice out, go outside, get some fresh air, mm -hmm. get some exercise in if you can, any way you can. Um, as John, we would say, eat you eat. Go outside, get fresh air, and eat your vegetables. And drink water. And drink water. Water's important. Water's important. <laughs> it, it is. Um, so, um, I'm just going to... Let me find this real quick. All right. So, for those of us who are still here, I'm just going to mute things and close out. See you all next time. Bye-bye.